بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> So inshallah brothers we have reached the final lesson today and will complete the final principle, which is the sixth principle from this book of six principles. Yeah, by the uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab and explained by Sheikh Abdul Razak Al-Badr Hafizullah. So inshallah we'll complete this book today. So we'll begin with the, where we left off, which is uh, the sixth principle. So the Sheikh, he says, and quoting the original author, he says, Aslu Sadis. Uh, رد, uh, رد, uh, رد التي التي القرآن في أبي بكر وعمر رضي الله عنهما فإن لم يكن فإن فإن لم يكن الإنسان كذلك فليؤرد عنهما فرضا حتما لا شك ولا إشكال فيه ومن ومن طلب الهدى منهما فهو إما زنديق وإما مجنون لأجل صعوبة فهمها فسبحان الله وبحمده <clears throat> كم بين الله سبحانه شرعا وقدرا خلقا وأمرا في رد هذه شبحة الملعونة من وجوه شتى بلغت إلى حد إلى حد الضروريات العامة. So before we go on to read the ayah, I will just read that, uh, translate what we've just read. So the sixth principle, and the Sheikh says that it is. Uh, refuting the doubt uh, that the shaitan has placed within the people and that is leaving off the Quran and the Sunnah and by leaving off the Quran and Sunnah then following opinions and desires that lead to splitting and differing right and the shaykh says and it is the, that the Quran and the Sunnah uh, and and the, uh, the reason uh, the, the, the reason with regards to this doubt is that the Quran and the Sunnah only, um, you know, a top rated scholar, for example, can understand them. A scholar uh, that understands all of the Islamic law completely, like 100%, for example. This is the type of doubt, yeah, that comes from the shaitan on the people and they end up in the situation. And then they go, the Shaykh goes to say, for example, uh, they'll say that the uh, Al-Mujtahid, this Mujtahid, you know, is described with this, uh, you know, with such and such descriptions. And the Shaykh mentions that, for example, you, you know, it may be that the way they describe and they put all these conditions down for this Mujtahid, uh, uh, we, you know, some of the things that they stipulate, you, you may not even find them in Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma. This is to the extremes they go to. Yeah. So then the Shaykh, he continues and he says, so he says that if the person isn't like that, according to their conditions of being a mujtahid, then the person turns away from, uh, turns away from pondering over the Quran, the Sunnah and following it, for example. And the one who actually seeks out guidance who wants guidance and is seeking guidance through the Quran and the Sunnah of course then he is labeled a heretic or a crazy person why? because of 
the perceived difficulty of understanding the Quran and the Sunnah. That's from their doubt, from the doubt, from the angle of the doubt. And then the Sheikh says, you know, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. He says, how, you know, Allah has clarified, you know, with regards to Islamic law, you know, what we find in the Quran and the Sunnah, etc. From the commands and other other things that we find that that's be, it's been clarified that we find the Quran things are clear absolutely clear and from the Sunnah clear they can follow however because of this um, uh, doubt misguided doubt a lot of the people are uh, they stay steer away from pondering over the Quran and the Sunnah and they'll just uh, they for example will just read the Quran, for example, they won't think, they won't ponder over the meanings. They'll just read for to gain a reward of reading, for example. But the Sheikh goes into more detail afterwards. So let's carry on, inshallah. So then the Sheikh he quotes this ayah here that's highlighted in green. But most of the people don't know, and that is from Surah Ghafir, verse fifty-seven. Then we have four verses from Surah Yasin. Yeah. لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِهِمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ أَغْلَالٌ فَهِيَا إِلَىٰ الْأَذْقَانِ فَهُمْ مُقْمَهُونَ وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَاغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ وَسَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِنَّمَا تُنذِرُ مَنِ اتَّبَعَ الذِّكْرَىٰ وَخَشِيَ الرَّحْمَٰنَ بِالْغَيْبِ فَبَشِّرْهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ وَأَجْرٍ كَرِيمٌ So that's from Surah Al-Yasin uh, From verse 7 to 11 So if we uh, just have a look at the meanings uh, we, we already had the first one So if we go to Surah Al-Yasin For the remaining ayahs that we read Then from verse Verse 7 Indeed the word of punishment has proved true against most of them So they will not believe Verily, we have put on their necks iron collars, reaching to uh, reaching uh, reaching to chin, so that their heads are forced up. And we have put a barrier before them and a barrier behind them, and we have covered them up so that they cannot see. It is the same to them whether you warn them or you warn them not; they will not believe. You can only warn him who follows the reminder, the Quran, and fears the most, uh, the most beneficent Allah, the unseen. Bear you, uh, bear you to such one the glad tidings of forgiveness and a generous reward, i.e., paradise. So the Sheikh mentions those ayahs, but uh, uh, in his uh, the original author, uh, Rahimahullah. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam a tasliman kathiran ila yomidin. So then that's the final uh, words of the original author in his book. So the rest of that follows is going to be the explanation of what we've read there. So then the the, the Sheikh himself, the original author, completes his uh, his uh, treatise <coughs> and his book by praising Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and sending a prayers and salutations upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family, and those who follow him, uh, and a dua obviously for them. So then uh, the Sheikh he says, so he obviously highlights each section. And we'll go through it. So he says, الشيطان وضع لأهل الأهواء وأرباب الباطل شبهة صدتهم عن كتاب الله وعن سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصبح ولا يروجونها بين الناس وكانت النتيجة نتيجة إرادة هؤلاء في التلقي والأخذ عن الكتاب وسنة مؤردين عن الكتاب وسنة وأصبحوا يأخذون عن دعات الباطل وما uh, يوجههم إليه أئمة الضلال وضع لهم شبهة شبهة خبيثة قال أولا مقدمة uh, مقدمة أولى لا يقرأ القرآن ولا ي, ولا يتدبر القرآن إلا مجتهد الأمر الثاني لا يكون الإنسان مجتهدا إلا بأن يكون موصوفا بكذا وكذا وكذا صفات كثيرة قال المصنف لا تكاد توجد تامة so in this paragraph, the Sheikh begins explaining what we read earlier, and he says, so he says the Shaitan has placed, you know, this doubt 
uh, uh, for the people of desires and their, their heads, the people of the head of them, the people of falsehood. This uh, uh, doubt that has blocked uh, has blocked the people from taking from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So these people they've uh, they, they 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 have basically um, promote you know this doubt among the people you know about. Uh, you know, if you, if you're not a top-rated scholar from the major scholars, for example, then you you are not allowed to ponder over the Quran, nor read, uh, 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 you know, the Hadith and stuff, and you're not allowed to uh, understand them because you can't understand it. So this is the doubt that they spread with the people. Uh, and so the Sheikh says, and then the result of that, what is the result of that? Then, what's the result of saying that? And he says that the result of saying that is that people are blocked from taking knowledge from the Quran and the Sunnah and they are they are turned away from it or they turn away from it and they stop seeking knowledge and instead then they are the hands of uh, these people who are promoting this uh, um, uh, doubt uh, at the heads of them. They're turning people away from the Quran and Sunnah and instead they're turning them to all kinds of uh, misguidance instead, which obviously is far worse, isn't it? So the Sheikh says, for example, they say things like, like if they're teaching or they're, they're putting their points forward for this doubt, they'll say, for example, firstly, the first uh, point, for example, you uh, don't read the Quran and don't ponder over the Quran. Uh, and the person that can do that is a mujtahid only. So uh, uh, only a mujtahid can read the Quran and ponder over it. Then they'll say, for example, the second affair, uh, 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 you know, a person cannot be a mujtahid except if he is described or has the following characteristics, such and such and such, describing that away. And they'll, they, they will, disc they will put down or set forth many, uh, characteristics. And the Sheikh says that the original author has said that they, they, they stipulate so many characteristics and conditions that even you may not find some of them in for example, Abu Bakr uh, radiallahu anhu and Umar radiallahu anhu, to, to, they take it to this extent. So then the Shaykh continues, next paragraph, he says, وَأَمْرٌ آخر يقولون لا يوجد في زماننا مشتهدين. هذه المقدمات تخلص منها بنتيجة, بنتيجة ما هي قول الله عز وجل أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أُلِي بهذه المقدمات وأصبحوا لا يتدبرون القرآن وَيَقْرَؤُونَ الْقُرْآنَ فَقَدْ لِلْبَرَكَةِ بِدُونَ مُحَاوَلَةِ لِفَحْمِ بِدُونَ مُحَاوَلَةِ لِفَحْمِهِ بَلْ بَعْضُهُمْ يُنَبِّهُ يَقُولُ إِنْتَبَهَ وَأَنْتَ تَقْرَأْ لَا تُحَاوِلْ أَنْ تَفْهَمْ إِقْرَأْ هَكَذَا فَقَدْ وَإِيَّاكَ أَنْ تَفْهَمَ شَيْئًا مِنْ لِأَنَّكَ إِنْ فَهِمْتَ شَيْئًا مِنْ الْقُرْآنِ أَلَى دِينِكَ خَطَرٌ يُخْشَى عَلَى دِينِكْ أَنْ يَنْحَرِفْ لكن هذا كتاب تقرأه للبركة تتبرك بقراءته حاول أن تقرأ مثل قراءة الأعجمي للقرآن أما أن تفهم شيئا منه هذا يخشى على دينك منه بل بعضهم صرح بأن القرآن فيه ظواهر كفرية أشياء تظهر منه كفرية يخشى على الناس منها لكن لا بد لنا من قراءته للتبرك لأنه كتاب مطالبون بقراءته فتقرأوا أو فنقرأه للتبرك أما للفهم وللتدبر إياك وهذا احذر فيصبح من يقرأ القرآن منهم يقرأه لمجرد التبرك وإذا قيل له الله عز وجل نهى عن الشرك ودليل قوله تعالى كذا ونهى عن عن كذا ودليل قوله كذا يقول لا لا تتكلم في هذا هذا للمجتهدين هذا لأهل الاجتهاد. So then in this paragraph the Sheikh he goes on to say he says they'll then mention for example another uh, uh, you know another thing they'll say uh, another issue they'll say for example oh in in our time there isn't anybody in this class of uh, high level scholars مجتهدين. So they'll use that as well. Saying that, uh, so therefore you can't, you know, we, we can't ponder over the Quran and we, we can't ponder over the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and trying to learn our deen. So then the Shaykh continues, says, he says, these are the types of introductions or things that they come with and they bring forth first. 
with regards to this doubt to push people away from the Quran and Sunnah and pondering over it. And the, the Shaykh says, you know, what's the result of that then, which is explained earlier on, that he says, uh, that what Allah said in the Quran, Afala yitadabbarun al-Quran. Do you not ponder over the Quran, for example? Do you not ponder over the Quran? Uh, and we've been, uh, I've been ordered to ponder over the Quran. Afala yitadabbarun al-Quran. Yeah, so, you know, don't they ponder over the Quran, for example? So the Shaykh goes on to say that, it says that the people have become such and such that they stop, then they stop pondering over the Quran. They don't reflect upon the Quran. They're just reading the Quran only for, you know, you know, for the reward, for example, uh, without uh, trying to understand it. Also, some of them, they, they like, they'll basically bring your attention to uh, such things as this. They'll say, for example, <clears throat> you know, you're reading the Quran. And when you're reading the Quran, don't try and understand it. It's only for reading only and to uh, gain the reward uh, and be warned not to try and, uh, you know, understand it or ponder over its meaning, lest, you know, you be, for example, you you end up um, a string away from the right path. For example, they'll come out with this kind of speech and, you know, you're becoming, uh, 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 you deviating. Uh, and, for example, even uh, you may, you know, for example, if you ponder or something, you might even become, you know, a disbeliever and they're saying these kinds of things. Um, and so they warn the people from pondering over the Quran, basically. And this is what the Sheikh is saying here in this paragraph that we've read. And for example, if somebody comes who, you know, has got some understanding of the Quran and has pondered over it, Alhamdulillah, and they come and they say, look, for example, uh, you know, this act you're doing or, you know, this is shirk and Allah has warned us from falling into shirk. And then comes with the Quran ayah saying, you know, in this ayah, Allah said this and, and such and such. They'll say, oh, no, no, don't talk about uh, the Quran and pondering over it and its meanings and all this. They'll say, no, no, that's only for the mujtahideen, not for us people. And and, and they'll say the kind, these kinds of, or these types of speech. So we carry on. So the Shaykh, he then goes on to say, والعلماء رحمهم الله يقولون الذي جاء في القرآن وهو أمور كثيرة واضحة لكل أحد لما يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى شهر رمضان هذه الكلمة واضحة أو غير واضح وإلا تحتاج إلى اجتهاد ومعرفة بالمقدمات التي ذكرها ذكروها واضحة شهر واضحة شهر رمضان شهر رمضان معروف عند كل أحد أنزل فيه القرآن نزول القرآن في رمضان في رمضان أيضا واضح هناك معاني ودقاء أو هناك معاني ودقائق واستنباط لأهل الاجتهاد أما أمور واضحة من الذي لا يفهم قول الله تعالى ولا تقرب الزنا أو تحتاج إلى مشتهد مطلق من الذي لا يفهم قول الله تعالى وأن أقيم الصلاة الأمر بإقامة الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتاب موقوتة قل للمؤمنين يغذوا من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم تحتاج إلى مجتهد مطلق حتى يفهم حتى يفهم ما غض البصر وقل للمؤمنات يغضن من أبصارهن ويحفظن فروجهن تحتاج إلى مجتهد مطلق حتى يفهم معنى غض البصر هذه هذه امور هذه امور واضحه والله عز وجل خاطب الناس خاطب الناس بلسان عربي معلوم مفهوم يعلمون معناه وفي القران امور كثيره واضحه لكل من يقرا القران ممن يفهم اللسان العربي so let's just stop there for a second because then the topic changes so then the sheikh he says have the lie says to us he says and the and the, the, the scholars May Allah have mercy upon them. They say, um, you know, that uh, that which came in the Quran uh, are many affairs, you know, clear ones. You know, it was many of the things that are in the Quran, the verses, the topics, the subjects are clear. There's many things that are clear within the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, for example, and the Sheikh has quoted some ayahs just as a, as a, as a contrast and comparison with that, is that, for example, where Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 100 and uh, 85, Shahru Ramadan, the Sheikh says, isn't that clear to us what Shahru Ramadan is? 
Uh, we know what the month of Ramadan is. Everybody knows what the month of Ramadan is. Every Muslim knows what the month of Ramadan is. Or does it require a top-rated, high-level scholar with particular, you know, skill set uh, in knowing all the rulings and everything uh, to be able to understand that? Uh, it's, a, it's a rhetorical question, isn't it, uh, for us? And the answer is no, we, we don't need a mujtahid. You know, even people like us, uh, uh, on the lower level where we're learning uh, the deen and, you know, we're from the general population. We can understand that, you know, the month of Ramadan, we know what it is. And then he says, for example, the likes of, uh, for example, uh, part of this ayah, uh, verse 185 also, say, same ayah, Unzila uh, uh, Quran, which was revealed in Ramadan regarding the, the Quran was revealed in that month. Do, we understand that, don't we? It's easy to understand. So the Sheikh is bringing these examples. He goes on to also say, and gives another example. He says, for example, don't we understand this ayah or part of the ayah? Wala taqrabu zina. Don't come close to fornication. As in, don't go close to it. Don't come near to it in committing that sin. That's clear to us, right? It's clear. If we read that, we know what what is being what what what, what uh, you know what the meaning is, what the intended meaning is. And what we need to do. So when we read the ayah, for example, okay, we're like, okay, we know what Allah Jalla wa'ala is saying. Don't go near zina. Never mind doing it. Don't even go near to it. You know, stay away from it. Clear. The Sheikh says, do we require uh, a mujtahid, a mutlaq, to, you know, a top rate scholar, top level scholar for uh, to understand that? No, we don't. Uh, likewise, also in Suratul Al-An'am, verse 72, an aqimu salah, and that you establish the prayer. We understand that. That's clear. We know what that means to establish the prayer. It's to establish the five daily prayers, for example. Yeah. Also, uh, another ayah that the Sheikh brings from Surah An-Nisa, verse 103. In kitabul muqutah. In that, indeed, the prayer, the prayer, verily, the prayer uh, for the believers is uh, an obli- obligatory. You know, kitabul muqutah. It's written. It's written for us. We have to do it. Yeah. It doesn't require uh, particular expertise to understand that. So the meaning of that ayah, for example, if we read the translation of that, would be that say to the believers to uh, lower their gaze, to, to lower their gaze and, and to preserve their private parts. Surah Tanur verse 30. Likewise, for the women as well, Surah Tanur verse 31, the, the verse after that. And say to the, the female believers to lower their gaze and their sight and lower their gaze in order for them to preserve their private parts. It doesn't doesn't require particular expertise to, to understand that, right? This is what the Sheikh is getting at here. And so he explains that. But then he goes on to say in the next paragraph, go, there, there are ayahs, for example, verses which, which require explanation from a scholar, for example, for the details and things like that, um, uh, as we all know. Um, however, there's a lot of ayahs there, uh, even just some of the examples that we're taking that do not require, you know, we can ponder over them and understand them. Yeah, don't have to be a scholar, for example, to understand. So the Sheikh he says, "Man yaqra al Quran, mimman yafham al lisan al Arabi." Wa hunaka umur tahtaj ila mada laalimahu aladina yistam bitoonahu minhum fihi dqaik wa masail tahtaj ila fiq ila fiqhin wa stimbati hadi al hadi hi lil mujtahidin. Nam. So then the Sheikh brings. Uh, the ayah here, just to explain that there's affairs uh, that require uh, a, a mujtahid or, a, you know, a scholar, a senior scholar, one who's deeply rooted in ilm, uh, knowledge, to be able to explain certain things and to clarify the meanings and the intended meanings. And if we go, for example, to this ayah, verse 83, Surah Al-Nisa, give us one second. We'll read the whole ayah and then we'll point out the part. So, uh, when there comes to them some matter touching public safety or fear, they make it known among the people. If only they had referred it to the messenger or to those charged with authority, among them, the proper investigators would have understood it from them directly. So, this is where we need to focus on just what we read there. So, it's the people who have the knowledge and have the ability in certain circumstances then, you know, we turn to them like the scholars to explain something further to us, yeah, in more detail. But uh, the point, uh, takeaway point from the paragraph here is that, you know, it's, we don't go with that doubt that, oh, we can't read anything in the Quran. Don't even bother pondering over anything because uh, for every verse, you need to be a 
top rate scholar to understand they, that, that, that that's not true. Um, and that doubt obviously only pushes people away from the Quran and Sunnah and actually following the guidance that Allah sent. So uh, then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, uh, let's see where we are. Oh yeah, okay. So he says, "Fi daqayq wa masail tahtaji la fiqh wa mustimbat hadi al mushtaidin." Nam amma an yahjur al Quran wa yatruk tadabur al Quran wa yuqal yakr al Quran bi mujarid al baraka hadi shubhatun ar uridat bi kathir min al nas wa asbahu muridin an al Quran wa wan wan dilalatihi munshagilin bil khuraf wa bil ahadith. Al Mordua, Wabil Kassas, Al Wahia, Wabil Hikayat, Wabil Manamat, Wabainam Kitabullah, Azza Wajal was sunnat, was sunnat on the Bihi, Salahu Ali was Salam, Illa, and now whom and whom are Muridun, Nasalahu Afia. So then the Sheikh says, like, if you stay away from the, you know, by following the, the you know, if, if you fall into this doubt, and you believe this doubt that we'll be discussing, then what will happen? What's the end result of that? You turn away from the Quran and the Sunnah. You don't bother pondering over any of its meanings. By Because of that, you don't learn anything. You're going in the wrong direction, right? Uh, 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 you're traveling a path of destruction, and you don't know it. And at the same time, what do you follow instead then? So instead of of actually from the Quran and Sunnah and the evidences, you start, you start becoming uh, engulfed in, for example, Superstitions, uh, weak or made up, uh, made up a hadith that are lies on the Prophet Sallallahu Stories, you know, also uh, stories, you know, uh, hocus pocus kind of stories. Should we say that you're following uh, 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 people's dreams? Somebody says, "Oh, I had a dream and I was told to do this, so now I'm doing this." You know, all these sort of things, uh, and you're following. Everything that is evil and you're not realizing. And the Sheikh says they're doing all of this, then instead, because of this doubt, and in front of them is the book of Allah Jalla Wala and the uh, Sunnah of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they are they've turned away from the two sources of our deen. And we ask Allah for strength. Yeah. That's what the Sheikh says. So then we move on to the next paragraph and the Sheikh he says okay we go on to the page to go inshallah we should finish soon so the Sheikh says فَهَذِي شُبْهَةٌ وَضَعَهَا الشَّيْطَانُ لَهُمْ وَأَثَرَتْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنْهُمْ وَضَعَهَا الشَّيْطَانُ لَهُمْ مِنْ أَجْلِ تَرْكِ الْقُرْآنِ وَسُنَّةِ وَتِبَاعِ الْآرَاءِ وَالْأَهْوَاءِ الْمُتَفَرِّقَةِ الْمُخْتَلِفَةِ وَإِذَا ترك أخذ الدين وتدبر وتدبر للقرآن الكريم وسنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من أين يأخذ الناس دينهم إذا اقتنع الناس إذا إذا اقتنع الناس بهذه شبهة بهذه شبهة من أين يأخذ الدين من الأقليات من التجارب من الخرافات وهذا عين الضياع. سيدنا الشيخ says then he says that this is the doubt that the shaitan has put uh, put forth in the people and uh, put forth and presented to them. And many people have been affected by it. And the shaitan's put that, the shaitan himself has put that out there in order for the Quran and the Sunnah to be left and that the people follow their own opinions and their own desires and what they think is right and what they feel that is correct, um, which is obviously differing Differing and splitting, and everybody has their own opinions, and you know all this happens. Differing and splitting. So then the Sheikh says, so if if it is if so if the Deen, for example, if it is left off, for example, the Quran, pondering over the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So then, where do the people get their religion from then? Because they're the two sources of the religion. So if they're leaving them off, where they're getting their so he says, if they are content, if the people are content with this dis, uh, with this doubt that the shaitans come with and present it to the people, then where are they getting their religion from? And for example, are they getting it from, from their own uh, intellect and thinking about things? Or is it from experiences that they've had? Or is it from superstitions they've heard or come up with? Um, and he says that this is the spring or the point. This is the source of all loss. All of this is lost then. 
because they've turned away from the Quran and the Sunnah. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he tells us here, he says, Ma hiya shubha. قَالَ هِيَا أَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ وَالسُنَّةَ لَا يَرَفُ مَا إِلَّا الْمُشْتَهِدِ الْمُطْلَقِ هذه مقدمة مقدمة الأولى المقدمة الثانية والمشتهد هو الموصوف بكذا وكذا وكذا أوصافا لها لا توجد تامة في أبي بكر وعمر. so then the sheikh says just refreshing our memory so he says what is this doubt then what is this doubt and he says as he quotes the original author here as you can see in bold writing uh, here that um, he says that it is that the Quran and the Sunnah uh, they're not under, they, 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 they are not understood except by a mujtahid al-mutlaq. And we mentioned what that meant earlier on. You know, like for example, a scholar who is deep rooted in knowledge of, uh, you know, the rulings of of the Sharia and etc. And then the second uh, and the second uh, point of theirs in their doubt is that this mujtahid he is described with such and such characteristics. They go to the point and the extremes. That we may even find some of those characteristics that they've come up with in their doubt uh, in Abu Bakr or Umar radiallahu anhuma. Then the, the Shaykh says, "An natija bahiya qaulu Allah Taala afla itadabarun al-Quran yulga tamaman, bal inna hadi al-aya afla itadabarun al-Quran dakhratun taht al-qaida hadihi afla itadabarun al-Quran yakulu lak al-Quran la yafhamu illa mushtahid." ولا يوجد في زماننا مشتهدين حتى هذه الآية لا يقرأ لا يقرأها علينا ولا تطالبنا بفهمها بفهمهما بفهمها لأن القرآن فهمه من فهمه من خصائص المشتهدين وفهمه من من خصائص خصائص المشتهدين تحت هذه شبهة صد الناس عن دين الله. سيدنا الشيخ وزن تسيه هذا يس then he says, what's the result of that? It is uh, what Allah Jalla Wala said, uh, and do they not ponder over the Quran? And he, and he says that this is like cancelled uh, completely because, you know, because of this doubt, the ones that fall into this doubt and are affected by it, they, 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 they don't ponder over the Quran. And they say, oh, up until the point, they will say, um, oh, don't even recite this ayah upon me. Don't even recite, like if anybody has came across somebody who said that, we would say, okay, Allah says in the Quran, afala yitadabarun al-Quran, do they not ponder over the Quran? They'll say that they'll say to us or to a person that comes with evidence, says, don't even recite that upon us. Only a mujtahid can uh, uh, ponder over the Quran, even this ayah, and don't don't request us to listen to it or for you to present that to us. And they say that it's only a mujtahid, you know, uh, a deep rooted, uh, uh, you know, a deep, deeply rooted uh, scholar in knowledge can only understand this. So don't come with this. That, that's how they are. And because of that, then the Sheikh says in this last sentence here in this paragraph that we're reading from, that um, uh, so those people are blocked from the Deen of Allah, Jalla wa Allah, the Deen of Allah, because of that. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, says, Oh Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم فإن تنازعتم في شيء فردوه إلى الله والرسول إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ذلك خير وحسن تعويلا هل هذا على بابه يرد إلى الله والرسول تحت هذه الشبهة قال العلماء الرد إلى الله الرد إلى كتابه والرد إلى الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام الرد إلى سنته فهل أصبح الرد إليهما على ضوء هذه الشبهة؟ الجواب لا لا يرد إلى الكتاب ولا يرد يرد إلى السنة لأن هذا لا يكون إلا على يد مجتهد مطلق ويقولون لا يوجد في زماننا المجتهد المطلق فإذا لا يرد إلى الكتاب والسنة. so then the sheikh he mentions an ayah to us so if we go to the meaning of that. So this is from Surah Nisa verse 59. Let's go there. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those of you Muslims who are in authority. And if you differ in anything amongst yourselves, refer it to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you believe in Allah and in the last day, that is better and more suitable for final determination. So as we can see from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here, it's clear, it's clear to us, and the Shaykh explains, it's clear to us that if we differ in an affair, we, we go back to Allah, we go back to the Quran, we look at what Allah said, 
and we also go back to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and see what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said uh, and, and this is the way and better for final uh, determination as Allah Jalla wa'ala has mentioned here uh, um, so the Shaykh says he says here let me see if I've missed something no I haven't okay uh, he says is this is this upon or upon that subject or topic of uh, referring to Allah and the Messenger? Is this under this topic of the uh, of the doubt? It says the ulama they've said with regards to this, they've explained what radu ilallah means, and they said that it's radu ila kitabihi, i.e., going back to and referring back to his book, i.e., the Quran, and. Radu ila Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam so is referring back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam i.e. the hadith what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam said you know did actions and approved and uh, tacit approvals etc is referring to his sunnah so then the shaykh says uh, uh, so has the uh, referring for example referring to this as, as this uh, shed any light on this uh, uh, shed any light for them on on this doubt of theirs, and the Sheikh says, the answer is no. Why? Because they come back and they say that nobody can understand uh, the Quran, nor the Sunnah, except a a scholar who's deeply rooted in knowledge. You know, the, the, this, the, they, they come with this, and they say that in our time, and they'll say this. Another thing they say is that in our time, uh, you will not find anybody of that uh, stature, for example. I, um, you know, al mushtahid al mutlaq you know, a scholar deeply rooted in knowledge, you won't find one. They, they, this is their doubt that they carry and they repeat. And so, so in the end, uh, what's the conclusion? The conclusion is that these people who have been affected by this doubt, um, uh, they don't refer back to the Quran nor the Sunnah. So they blocked. They blocked themselves from the Quran, Sunnah, except whoever Allah has mercy upon, and they give them guidance. And you know, on success, and they turn back to the truth, and that's a different thing, yeah. So then the Shaykh goes on to say to us, he says, قَالَ فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنِ الْإِنسَانُ كَذَلِكَ يَعْنِي بِتِلْكَ الْأَوْصَافِ لِلْمُشْتَهِدِ فَلْيُعْرِضْ عَنْهُ مَا فَرْضًا حَتْمًا لَا شَكَّ وَلَا إِشْكَالَ فِي هَكَذَا يَقُولُونَ وَبَعْضُهُمْ بِمِثْلِ هَذِهِ الْأَلْفَاظِ يَحُزُّ الْأَوَامِ وَيُخَلْخِلْ ثَوَابَتَهُمْ فَرْضًا حَتْمًا لَا شَكَّ وَلَا إِشْكَالْ فِيهِ أَنْ لَا تَتَدَبَّرَ الْقُرْآنَ أَلَا تَتَدَبَّرَ الْقُرْآنَ أَنْتَ هَلْ إِنْدَكَ صِفَاتِ الْمُشْتَهِدِينَ مَا يَجُوزُ لَكَ أَنْ تَتَدَبَّرَ فَقَتْ إِقْرَأْ الْقُرْآنَ لِلْبَرَكَةِ يُصَدِّقُ الْعَامِي وَيُصْبِهُ لَا يَقْرَأْ الْقُرْآنَ إِلَّا الْمُجَرِدْ تَبَرُّكَ وَالْآيَاتِ الَّتِي فِيهَا النَّهِي عَنِ الشِّرْكَ النَّهِي عَنِ الزِّنَا كُلِّهَا لَا يَأْخُذْ مِنْهَا وَلَا يَفْهَمْ مَعْنَاهَا وَلَا يَتَلَقَّى عَنْهَا uh, so then uh, in this paragraph here the shaykh goes on to say he says so what happens is that um so if they if the person isn't like that for example referring to doesn't have those uh still talking about the doubt from the angle of the doubt so if the person doesn't fit these characteristics of a uh uh al mutlaq then they turn away from whatever he's saying without a doubt and without a problem. They turn away from that person. Uh, 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 they won't take from the person, basically. And they'll, they'll say, for example, some of them will say, and they'll come with the, these kinds of uh, words. Um, they, uh, uh, they'll basically say that, you know, just read the Quran. Uh, don't ponder over it. You're not from, you, you don't have the characteristics of the mujtahideen. So it's not permissible for you to ponder over the Quran. Just read it only to uh, gain reward from reading. And the general person will believe them in what they say. They'll, they, they'll take what they're saying as the truth. For example, so if it's just a, a general person and he's talking about, like, oh, Allah says this in the Quran, because it's clear, like some of the ayahs that we read earlier on, they're clear, aren't they? Anybody can understand them. It's straightforward what's required. You know, uh, it doesn't require any deep thinking. It's straightforward. You can understand it straight away um, with a little bit of pondering. And that is it. They'll say to that even that person, they'll say, oh no, you just read, you're not, you don't carry these such and such characteristics. You're not able to understand the Quran. Don't read it. Don't read the hadith either. Uh, just read the Quran only. Uh, don't ponder over it. Just read it for, um, uh, to, 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 to gain reward of reading. That is it. 
This is what they say. So when there's verses uh, warning us uh, and, uh, and, and was warning us from falling into shirk um, and zina, fornication, and other than that, they're like, oh, no, they, they won't understand it. Uh, they, they don't want to read it. And why? Because of this doubt that they've been affected by. So things as clear as what we've read, some of the examples earlier on, on the previous page, they just turned blind eyes, completely blind to it because of this doubt that they've been affected by, have been affected with. So the Sheikh, he continues. He says, Qala, وَمَنْ طَلَبَ يَعْنِي هَذَا كَلَامُهُمْ وَمَنْ طَلَبَ الْهُدَى مِنْهُمَا أَيْ مِنَ الْكِتَابُ وَسُنَّةً فَهُوَ إِمَّا زِنْدِيكَ لِنَهُ خَاطَرَ بِدِينِهِ مَا هِيَ الْمُخَاطَرَ بِالدِّينِ أَنْ, يف... أن يَفْحَمَ الدِّينَ مِنْ ذَوَاهِرِ الْكِتَابُ وَسُنَّةً هذا إما زندي... إما زنديق وإما مجنون لماذا مجنون لأجل, س... لأجل صعوبة فهمه... فهمهما فهذا مجنون لأنه يحاول أن يفهم من القرآن ما لا يمكن أن يفهم أن يفهم من القرآن فهذا فيه نوع من الجنون أو أنه إنسان زنديك مارق من الدين فمثل هذا الكلام عندما يروج على العوام كم يفعل بهم وكم وكم يبعدهم عن كتاب ربهم وسنة نبيهم صلوات الله وسلامه عليه so then the sheikh he goes on to say that he says that for example so the person who is seeking guidance through the Quran and the Sunnah i.e. pondering over it, reading it and pondering over its meanings and you know acting upon the after pondering over it and learning and wants to uh, you know learn genuinely you know seeking guidance from the Quran and the Sunnah they'll turn around and they'll be uh, oh, this person is uh, either a heretic, they'll call him a heretic because he's, he's he's entering into dangerous territory or whatever for them because of their doubt um, with regards to the deen and that, you know, uh, uh, that he's trying to, uh, trying to understand the deen from what's apparent in the Quran and the Sunnah, right? They, so they'll call him either he's a heretic or he's a crazy one. And the Sheikh said, why would they say crazy? So why would they say Zindik? But why would they say crazy as well? They may call him crazy, crazy, because because of their perceived uh, difficulty in understanding the Quran and the Sunnah. So they'll say, oh, this one's a crazy one because he's trying to understand the Quran and the Sunnah, which only uh, a Mujtahid Mutla can do, and he's not one of those. So he's crazy, he's a crazy one. Him, You know, they'll say things like this. Or he's a heretic uh, that has left the fold of Islam by uh, by trying to ponder over the Quran and the Sunnah. Which obviously is their doubt. It's incorrect, isn't it, what they're saying? And they say, the Sheikh says, and they say the likes of this kind of speech, and they promote this kind of speech to the general public of the Muslims. And and, and so because of this, the people who follow that or listen to it and are affected by it, then they end up going far away from the Quran and the Sunnah. And the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is what the Sheikh has mentioned in that paragraph. So then the Sheikh brings um, uh, some uh, benefits from a different Sheikh, a Sheikh um, Al Imam Al Shanqiti, Rahimahullah, an older scholar, yeah, in his book called Adwal Bayan. So the Sheikh says, Wa Sheikh Al Imam Al Shanqiti, Rahimahullah, fi kitabihi Adwa, uh, fi kitabihi Adwa Al Bayan. In the Quli Lahi Taala, fi Surah Muhammadin, Afala Yeta Dabarun Al Qurana, Am Ala Kulubin Af Akfaluha. In the Hadil Aya, Wakafa, Wakfatan, Mutawalatan, in the Hadil Mudua, Wa Ora the Hadi Shubhat, Shubhata, Wa Ajaba, Leha, Ijabatan, Muasatan, Wa Ashara, Ila Badiman, Kalaha, Watawasa, Atawasu, and Tawilan, Fil Ijabati, Anha, Hatta inaha Yani, Tuslihu, and Takun. Uh, risalatan uh, mufradatun or risalatan mufradatan min al maani al azimati wa tawasuati wa taqrirati al mufidati lati zakraha in the kawli ta'ala afala yitadabbarun al qur'ana am ala kulubin akfaluha min tafsirihi adwa al bayan. So then the Shaykh brings this to us as an extra benefit. Hafidhullah, he says that a Shaykh al Imam al Shinkiti, may Allah. 
of mercy upon him. In his book, Adwa al-Bayan, um, uh, uh, with regards to that part of the book where he mentions the, uh, the, uh, the verse of the Quran, the speech of Allah, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not ponder over the Quran? Or, or are their locks, or are their hearts locked, locked up? Or are, or are their hearts locked up? Yeah? The Sheikh says that, um, uh, with regards to this ayah, or, um, in that, in the book, Adwal Bayan, uh, uh, Sheikh Al-Imam Al-Shinkhiti, that, he says that the Sheikh, he stopped there in his book, he stopped there also at the time of writing an authorship, he stopped there, and it was a long pause. Why? Because he explained this verse in its entirety, uh, expansively. He ex- explained this expansively. And this is what the Sheikh means by when he stopped here in, with this ayah in his book. He explained it expansively and there was a lengthy, expansive explanation, exegesis of that ayah. With regards to the topic, with this da- because of this doubt that has spread amongst the people that we're discussing today. And uh, the sheikhs mentioned that. And I th- I'm not sure if this book is in English. Maybe some of the brothers who may know can uh, can clarify. But uh, if it is, it's worth getting hold of and reading. Uh, and then the sheikh, he goes on to say, ثُمَّ خَتَمَ بِتَصْبِيحِ اللَّهِ وَحَمْدِهِ وَتَصْبِيحِ تَنْزِيهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَلَىٰ عَنْ مِثْلِ هَذَا الْإِفْتِرَاءَاتِ وَعَنْ مِثْلِ هَذَا الْقَوْلِ الْبَاطِلِ فِي كَلَامِهِ وَكَلَامِ رَسُولِهِ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ وَحَمْدًا عَلَىٰ نِئْمَةِ التَّوْفِيقِ لِلْخَيْرِ وَالْهِدَايَةِ لَهِ وَالسَّلَامَةِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الشُّرُورِ So then the Sheikh says that the original author, Sheikh Al-Islam, Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahmahullah, he, he finishes this uh, a book and he completes this book by uh, by mentioning the tasbih and why uh, the tasbih and the hamd yeah praise for Allah Jalla wa'ala. and the tasbih subhanallah what does it mean the shaykh gives us the benefit what does it mean he says is uh, when we say subhanallah we are freeing Allah from every negative thing we're freeing Allah from every negative thing. Think of it like that. That Allah is free from everything. He does not in need of anything. He's not in need. There's nothing that is not going to be attributed to him. And the Sheikh says, here, Tanzihu, Tabarka wa ta'ala, and Mithlu hadil iftirat. Like, for example, today's lesson, for example, these this doubt that's been attributed to the deen, to, obviously to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then, in regards to his deen, then Allah is free from these lies. Yeah? Uh, uh, for example, this doubt and any other lie in uh, with regards to that and any other defect, Allah is free from that, right? Um, and uh, and all this kind of falsehood and false speech, Allah is free from all of this. Yeah, and hamdan, praise, praising Allah. For example, alhamdulillah, hamdan. He says, and this is for uh, why we praising Allah subhanahu wa taala. We we already know this, but the Sheikh explains to us. He says, for example, uh, for example, uh, because of the, you know the blessing of success and good and guidance and uh, safety uh, from all of this evil. For example, then alhamdulillah. So the Sheikh he finishes the book, and then he goes on to say here. قَالَ فَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ كَمْ بَيِّنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ سُبْحَانُهُ شَرْعًا وَقَدْرًا خَلْقًا وَعَمْرًا فِي رَدِّ هَذِي شُبْهَةِ الْمَلْعُونَةِ مِنْ بُجُوهٍ شَتَّى بَلَغَتْ إِلَى حَدٍ ضُرُورِيَاتِ الْعَامَةِ وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ يَقُولُ هَذِي شُبْهَةَ زَيْفُهَا مَكْشُوفٌ تماما واضح في القران والسنه وكم بين في القران والسنه من الدلائل على فساد هذا الكلام وبطلان هذا التقرير الفساد الفاسد بين بيانا الى ان اصبح في حد الضروريات المعلومه من الدين بالضروره ولكن استطاع الشيطان بمكره ومصائد مصائد ومصائده ان يقنع اناس بها فأخ فاخذوا يُرَوِّجُونَهَا وَيَسُدُّونَ بِهَا النَّاسِ عَنْ كَلَامِ اللَّهِ وَكَلَامِ رَسُولِي عليه الصلاة والسلام So then the Sheikh, he goes on to say that he says that this um, that the, 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 the doubt 
this doubt that in the sixth principle, the sixth principle we've been talking about today and discussing today, it says that this doubt, this, you know, it's uh, fakeness, let's say, or it's made up, uh, it's clear, it's exposed. You know, the Shaykh Alhamdulillah has exposed this and it's clear. And it's, and it's been exposed by way of the Quran and the Sunnah, what we find in the Quran, the speech of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Quran, the Shaykh says, how much of the Quran has clarified this and the Prophet and the uh, and the Sunnah of the Prophet as uh, with the evidences has clarified this, uh, you know, co- you know, this corruption, this corrupt uh, beliefs and ways that people follow, and the speech and falsehood, um, and it's been clarified by the Quran and the Sunnah, and it's by way of also reached the it's reached the point of necessity as well because of. How the people, how the shaitan has tricked the people and has tried to um, spread this uh, doubt and the people have become content with it, for example, and they've begun, uh, you know, they, they, they take it and they start promoting it and they block the people from the, the speech of Allah Jalla Wala and, uh, and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Salatu Wasalam, yeah, Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. Then the Shaykh says, final paragraph here, and then we finish. Alhamdulillah. The Shaykh says, Thumma khatama bihadi al ayat al karima inna jalna fi anakihim aglalun fahia il al alkani fahum mukmahun wa jalna min baini aidihim saddam wa min khalfihim saddam fa shayna hum fahum la yusirun wa sawaun alayhim anzartahum amlam tundir hum la yuminun inna ma tundirum. Karim. And that's uh, the few ayahs that we read at the beginning of the lesson. And then the Shaykh says, Qala akhiruhu ay akhir hadal kitab aw hadi risala. So if we just uh, finally uh, refresh ourselves of uh, those ayahs that we were reading earlier, then that's from 8 to 11. Verily, we have put on their necks iron collars reaching to chins so that their heads are forced up. And we have put a barrier before them and a barrier behind them and we have covered them up so that they cannot see. It is the same to them. Whether you warn them or you warn them not, they will not believe. You can only warn him who follows the reminder of the Quran and fears the most beneficent Allah, the unseen. Bear you to such one the glad tidings of forgiveness and a generous reward, i.e. paradise. So uh, then the Shaykh obviously reminds us with these ayat. And uh, Alhamdulillah, he finishes there. And uh, so we've completed the book, Alhamdulillah. And inshallah, next week, uh, next week or the week after, inshallah, we can start a new book. Bismillah ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ilan. Wa astaghfiruka wa tabu alayk. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammadin. Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Inshallah, I'll inform the brothers, inshallah, in the, in the group of uh, the next book, uh, either this week or the week after, inshallah. But we'll stick to the same time for now. Barakallah, people. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.